after Xiaomi announced its 3 nanometers chip XSaring O1. It sparked intense debate online. In terms of specifications, it uses a 10-core architecture with 2 plus 4 plus 2 plus 2 cores, optimized from ARM's standard design, and is manufactured using TSMC's second-generation 3 nanometers process N3E, making Xiaomi the fourth company globally to release a 3 nanometers chip. XRing O1's benchmark scores slightly surpass MediaTek's Dimensity 9400 but fall short of Qualcomm's Snapdragon 8 Gen 4, reaching world-class performance. Logically, a Chinese company rejoining the elite chip design club should be cause for celebration, and China Central Television reported the news, congratulating Xiaomi. However, in reality, Chinese internet users have unleashed overwhelming skepticism mockery, and even abuse, placing Xiaomi in an awkward position. A soul-searching question emerges. Why hasn't the U.S. sanctioned Xiaomi? Suddenly, various conspiracy theories flooded the internet. Some claim Xiaomi's chip design team appeared out of nowhere, mastering 3 nanometers chip design in a short time, covering a path that took other chip companies decades, which seems implausible. They suggest Qualcomm or MediaTek to evade U.S. technology restrictions and Chinese government scrutiny, sold chips to Xiaomi for rebranding as domestic products. Others argue that whenever Chinese companies achieve technological breakthroughs, the West eases technology restrictions to disrupt and undermine Chinese firms. Now, with China's 7 nanometers chip yield improving and 5 nanometers production expected by year end, Opening TSMC's 3 nanometers process to Chinese companies to target Huawei and SMIC is seen as a grand conspiracy. In truth, these people are overthinking it. A simple analysis reveals this is just ordinary commercial behavior, unrelated to conspiracy theories. Since China Central Television reported the news, the Chinese government's stance clearly supports it. While officials at the Ministry of Industry and Information Technology may not be smarter than internet users, they are certainly not fools who would applaud if the U.S. used Xiaomi to sabotage China's chip industry. We can approach this from another classic question. Why doesn't the U.S. sanction Lenovo? Clearly, Lenovo is an assembly factory with little technical strength, posing no threat to U.S. technological dominance. Then, ask another question. Why did the U.S. sanction Huawei? The answer is simple. Huawei seriously threatens U.S. technological dominance. Imagine if the U.S. had not sanctioned Huawei. What would Huawei look like today? It would be the world's largest chip design company, outperforming Qualcomm, with phone chips rivaling Apple's. In security, automotive, Internet of Things, set-top boxes, and televisions. Huawei would lead the industry. Moreover, Huawei remains the largest holder of 5G patents and the top 5G equipment supplier, achieving overwhelming leadership in telecommunications despite seven years of sanctions. Additionally, without sanctions, Huawei would still be the world's top phone company, with Huawei and Honor covering high and low-end markets, dominating tablets, laptops, and other products. If Huawei had not been sanctioned, it would have prevented NVIDIA from monopolizing the AI wave. Even with 7 nanometers technology, Huawei's AI computing clusters, enhanced by its communication technology, could match NVIDIA's computing power. Not to mention Huawei's advancements in cloud services and smart vehicles. Today's Xiaomi, even scaled up tenfold, could not reach Huawei's level. Take a simple example. Before sanctions, Huawei's phone sales surpassed Samsung and Apple, becoming number one globally, and it released the world's first 5 nanometers 5G flagship chip, Kirin 9000. At that time, neither MediaTek nor Qualcomm could compete with high silicon. Huawei was already developing Harmony OS and its HMS framework. Without U.S. sanctions, Huawei could have leveraged its vast user base and channel advantages to force Google to make concessions in the Android ecosystem or even replace Android with its own system. High Silicon's chips, P3 
paired with Huawei's proprietary baseband and its dominance in telecom equipment, would have formed a complete closed loop, delivering a significant blow to the US. Xiaomi's XRing 01 is merely a simple optimization of ARM's standard design, far less customized than Huawei's, and its baseband must be sourced from MediaTek, Qualcomm, or Unisoc. It cannot threaten Apple or Google, let alone Qualcomm. Yes, Qualcomm is often seen as a 5G industry giant, but in reality, it is not on Huawei's level. Huawei outclasses Qualcomm comprehensively, and without U.S. government protection, Qualcomm might struggle to survive, let alone act arrogantly. For Qualcomm, Xiaomi is far from a threat and can be a partner to win over, not suppress. Xiaomi also lacks Huawei's ability to develop its own operating system or build an ecosystem independent of Android, so it poses no threat to Google. Positioned in the mid-to-low-end market, it cannot challenge Apple either. Thus, Xiaomi has never been on the U.S. sanctions list. Moreover, phone socks are not a U.S. government restriction area, and Xiaomi is not involved in military industries, so the U.S. has no reason to sanction it. The China-U.S. trade and technology war has lasted seven years, moving past the initial phase of extreme defensive passivity. China can now counterattack moderately under stable defense, inflicting visible damage on the U.S., such as through rare-earth restrictions and breakthroughs in large-scale AI models. China's advantages in photovoltaics, electric vehicles, drones, and robotics continue to grow. The U.S.'s strengths are now limited to high-end chips and generative AI. In military and space technology, the U.S. is comprehensively on the defensive. China's robust industrial strength and complete supply chains are proving their value. At this moment, we should hold our ground and maintain an open mindset. We must not only promote economic globalization, but also build an open technology ecosystem. We should encourage enterprises to develop domestic cycles while also going global, collaborating with other countries and even U.S. companies. Openness and shared prosperity will always triumph over monopoly and selfishness. This year marks the 80th anniversary of the victory in the Chinese War of Resistance against Japan, fought from 1931 to 1945. Facing a powerful Japan, China endured initial despair and mid-term wavering, depleting Japan's strength through prolonged resistance and gaining support from strong allies like the U.S., ultimately defeating Japanese fascism. This war was the most significant in modern Chinese history, laying the foundation for China's current international status. In the Korean War, we also clashed directly with the U.S. The U.S. is not a third-rate country like India. It has resilience. After being heavily defeated by Chinese forces and abandoning Seoul, the U.S. military launched a fierce counterattack, causing significant losses to Chinese forces, leading to a ceasefire at the 38th parallel. Competing with a nation as experienced as the U.S., we should not expect quick victories. Since China-U.S. competition will persist long-term, we must encourage enterprises to seize every opportunity to grow stronger and engage with cutting-edge global technology. Xiaomi's XRing 01 may lack a proprietary baseband, relying on ARM authorization, US EDA software, and TSMC foundry services. Yet, it has provided thousands of Xiaomi engineers with invaluable experience, teaching them how to work with the world's most advanced chip architectures, EDA software, and foundries effectively stimulating the domestic ecosystem. Technological competition is ultimately about talent. Today, over half of global AI talent and most chip design talent are Chinese. We must adopt an open and inclusive mindset to attract more enterprises and talent to innovate in China, rather than being trapped by emotions or blindly pursuing 100% localization. Huawei is the backbone of the nation and so is Xiaomi. We need more tolerance and less hostility, as typing on a keyboard is far easier than committing to research and development. Tonight at 7 p.m., Xiaomi will hold its launch event, 
and I will be watching, cheering for the Monkey King. I will also share key updates and release a new video. Honestly, I look forward to tech companies from China and the US competing fairly to see who comes out on top. I also hope the US government relies less on underhanded tactics and shows more honor. Don't think the Chinese can't play dirty. The next Counter-Strike will hurt far more than rare earth restrictions.